Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters. Never to be forgotten heroic exploits in the history of a few brave men who made the West safe for civilization. The danger which characterized the early days of trailblazing reached its height during the post-Civil War days when a few hundred men guarded almost 1,800 miles of Santa Fe Trail which stretched from Kansas City to Santa Fe, New Mexico. The one element that held back a great tide of migration into the Plains country was the fear of attacks from Indians. In 1866, travel along the Santa Fe Trail became so hazardous that something drastic had to be done. At the headquarters of General Winfield Scott Hancock in command of the Army of the Missouri, an old friend says to him, Winfield, I tell you if something isn't done to stop these marauding, scalping red devils, the plains will never be made safe for civilization. Well, I hate to take up the march again. I thought our Indian agents with the Comanches, Kiowas, Cheyennes, Arapahoes, and Apaches had solved the question. There will always be a question, General, until every last man of those bloodthirsty savages is wiped out. The red man has his rights too, my friend. General, the only good Indian is a dead one. These redskins have gotten so bold, they are burning the Overland Mail Station, killing its employees, driving the livestock off. Well, I'll send runners out for the head chiefs. I think we can meet in council at Fort Larned or Dodge by the 10th of April. The power won't do any good this time. It's going to be a fight to the finish. Well, I'd rather have the United Tribes of Indians be my friends than my enemies. Even a soldier knows that sometimes it's better to talk than fight. <laughs> Fort Larned, April 14th, 30 miles from the encampment of the Sioux in the Cheyenne. Another runner from the Council of the Sioux in the Cheyenne, sir. And I'll talk to the Indian boy. General will talk to you. Well, what do the chiefs say in council this time, boy? They are filled with excuses, as before. This time, they have sighted a buffalo herd, and they must go hunting. Yeah. Go back to the chief's tall bull and bear the turns around and tell them the white chief Hancock will give them one day more. Then I'll march upon their villages. White chief, beware even in councils. All Indians will smoke pipe of peace, but they have secretly sworn to kill all whites. Obey my orders at once. Too many Indians have guns. Today, white chief, the sun was red with blood of my white brothers that is to be shed. The shadow of that blood-red sun covered the plains... It is a warning from the great spirit. I have spoken in love and friendship. I yet have hopes of smoking the pipe of peace with my brothers, the Indians. With all except Santanta of the Kiowas. Of him, beware. By day, he will talk brotherly love with you, and at night, steal in and scalp you. All the chiefs were finally brought together in a council at Fort Dodge, where the Santa Fe crossed the Arkansas. Now that we have smoked the pipe of peace with our white brothers, Chief Santanta of Kiowas will address the white chief, General Hancock. To the orations of Little Raven, Yellow Bear and Kicking Bird, 
I can say that in my heart there is only love and friendship for my white brothers. There is place enough in this land over which the Great Spirit rules for all. Those of our tribes who have brought harm to the whites are not known to us. They are renegades, and they do not sit with us in our councils. Santanta's heart bleeds for all things that are injured, even when he finds a switch along the trail that some white man has torn up out of the ground. Never can that switch become a tree. I promise my white brothers my friendship, and I will forever with them smoke the pipe of peace. I have spoken. Beware of the lying of Santanta, white chief. I think, General, the old boy means business. I'm for giving him a present, a fine one, this uniform coat, sash, and hat of a major general. His words have a ring to them. All right, give him the present. I'll trust him for now. But to be on the safe side, I'll leave a few soldiers along the Santa Fe Trail. The spring passed. The peace gift worked for a few weeks. In the summer, the Indians grew bolder and more aggressive presence of the army along the trail held in check what might have been a general massacre. In the spring of 1868, the Indians renewed their attacks on frontier settlements and overland travelers with increased violence. And as victory crowned their efforts, the United Tribes met in secret council and from Santanta were given the war cry. The council fires blaze into the heavens. The poisoned arrow is strung upon the bow. The tomahawk is strong. The scalping knife sharp. And the cry of the red man is, no white man, woman, or child must escape. They must be wiped out. Our battle cry is, massacre them! Came the summer of 1868, a terrible summer that was filled with murders and scalping. Horror-stricken immigrants turned back for the hundreds, and for the moment the tide of immigration stopped. At Cimarron Crossing, a band of yelling, painted devils attacked the wagon train. Can't hold out much longer against them. How much powder left in the barrel, Phil? The barrel is empty. They know we're out of ammunition. There they come for us. Look at his split. How many of our body goes to Mansus before? Fourteen. It's just the three of us left now. We're goners. But we'll die with our boots on. Give him what we got in our revolvers, men. And give it to him good. With each Indian victory, the reign of terror became more horrible. A band of Cheyennes led by black cattle swooped down on a lonely Kansas frontier home and captured a young girl, Margaret White. Three weeks later, they captured a Mrs. Morgan and brutally killed her husband. Stages were held up and the passengers killed. Settlers were driven off their farms. And the horrible summer promised to be climaxed by an even more terrible fall. But the grim frontiersmen accepted the challenge and dropped their fall labor in field and barns, took up their guns, organizing a cavalry regiment, the Kansas Volunteers. General Sheridan planned a campaign. General Hancock acted swiftly, too. And the suppression of Santanta and his hordes began, but not until Major Sully met a bloodthirsty Indian force under Santanta on Beaver Creek. Looks like the Indians are falling back, Major Sully. It looks like that to me, too. We've got them on the run this time. Ordered the wagons and the cavalry to follow them up. Quite a maze of low sand hills getting dark, too. I don't want to lose the advantage. If we catch up on Santanta... And take him prisoner. We've got the Indian uprising under control. Is the order to go ahead? Yes, sir. General Sully. General Sully, wake up, sir. Huh? Santana's got us in a trap. Trap? Trap? Oh, we couldn't see anything while it was dark. We just followed them blindly through all those low sand hills, and now our wagons are mired. What was... I see now. That was one of Santana's tricks. What's the hour? Dawn, sir. And the enemy. What is their position? They're closing in, sir. Their number? About 2,000. They'll give the order to fall back before dodge. Retreat, sir? Retreat, Lieutenant. That's what I said. But fighting every inch of the way. Retreat! 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 Lieutenant, can we move those ammunition wagons? Two of them, sir. Very well. Men, make every shot count. We've not one bullet to spare. If we can make Fort Dodge, we're saved. Mo 
Mulberry Creek, 12 miles from Fort Dodge. Our ammunition is just about exhausted, sir. First and for the men, too. And the food. And that red devil sometimes and his major general's uniform is at the head of 2,000 yelping braves, pouring good Yankee lead into our men. Your order, sir? Just as soon as it's dark, dispatch our swiftest messenger to Fort Dodge. Tell them to send us every round of ammunition they can spare. And soldiers? I dare not ask for one man. Fort Dodge is not too strongly garrisoned as it is. But give me ammunition, and our men will take fresh hearts. Given half a chance, I'll turn this blundering defeat of mine into victory. Under cover of night, the messenger sped through 12 miles of the most hostile country known to any human being. And before another morning dawned, that precious ammunition was in the hands of Major Sully. Soldiers who had not slept in nearly four days, worn out with anxiety and fatigue... Soldiers who suffered from thirst and hunger suddenly forgot every hardship in the joy of being able to fill their carbines and rifles and give battle to a sneering, murderous, mocking redskin, Santanta. Awaiting your orders, sir. What do you think would happen if I'd give the order to charge the enemy? The men are pretty worn, sir. Horses haven't been fed or properly fed in almost a week. I wonder if the thought of victory, the thought of thousands of settlers being saved... The stream of emigrants moving over the Santa Fe Trail again. A normal return of mail and passengers to the plains. I wonder, doing all this would be food and drink to the men. It would be life to them. They'll do their duty, sir. They'll do their duty and love it, or I don't know my men. All right, Lieutenant. Mount with me. Get two engines with one bullet this time. Major, there's your answer. The Indians know there's something up. Major, spend hand and get ready to charge. We'll be in for this time. Bugler, sound the call to mount. Yes, sir. Rip roaring, ready to go, sir. Just look at their faces. You wouldn't think they'd been nearly a week without sleeping on short rations. Yuga, on the cold, it's Major Sully, with the aid of his sturdy Indian fighters, did indeed turn a dismal defeat into a glorious victory. Not alone was the Santa Fe Trail made safe for some time to come, but the garrison at Fort Dodge was saved from being wiped out by the heroism of these daring pioneers. Pioneers who left their mark on the pages of history as frontier fighters. 